Hello. Uh, I wanted to answer a request I've had a lot and give a, uh, a nail tutorial. <laughs> like fingernails, not like screws and nails. And anyway, um, so I am, as most of you know, uh, a little shaky in general. I have a little bit of a tremor and this can make it very hard to do my nails because um, I tend to get the nail polish all over the place and nobody wins but uh, so I used to you know get them done professionally but um, I have found that there are um, some nail wraps that work really, really well. Um, and I am wearing some now, although I'm going to take these ones off uh, with a little bit of um, nail polish remover, which is all it takes, just typical nail polish remover. And um, because if you can see, maybe not... You can, I think you can see that if you look, they've kind of grown, uh, they stay on, but you know your nails grow out. And my nails grow very quickly, so quick, quickly, like to the quick. Anyway, so, um, so, uh, it's just like having a shellac or a gel nail polish that they dry instantly and they really hold up well, but... Unfortunately, you know, your nails do grow out and you have to change them once in a while. So I'm going to be changing them, but there's only one um, brand that I found that works really well. And um, so I've ordered just a bunch from them <laughs> so that I have it. Um, and I think that's all. I have tried other brands. Um, there are like drugstore brands too uh, that make like nail wraps, but maybe that's just instructions. Oh, well, that's like it's just like a statement, but um, but anyway, so yeah, so the drugstore brands I've tried have been really bad. They're more like um, like stickers almost that go on your nails so they don't lay flat um, and they don't really look like nail polish it looks like you put like stickers on your fingernails so this brand um, I don't know if I'm saying it correctly but I think so it's called In Coco In Coco which I think is such a pretty name um, In Coco and I guess this maybe pamphlet shows off what they have um, in Coco nail polish applique <laughs> and the um, oh yeah see so you can see the broad spectrum of all of the different colors that they have and all the different um, patterns that they have um, and pick and pick this folds out into like instructions um, oh yeah you can kind of see her like pulling at it. So anyway, yeah, it's called In Coco. In Coco. So, and then, um, yeah, it's like putting on real nail po nail polish. And um, they actually even will s like when you open them, it smells like nail polish. So yeah, yeah. Um, but you just pull them and put them on the finger, and I, I guess I'll show all of that to you. Um, but I have gotten them in. As always, this time of day, my lighting is so wonky, so you might not be able to see very well, but I'll put the camera right on, on them as I actually do it. But I've just got um, a number of different patterns um, with like different colors. I think maybe I'll do these Christmassy ones today. Maybe I'll wait for next week for the Christmassy ones. I don't know. But some of them, oh, these are good. These have like snowflakes. Let's see. Once again, I don't think you can really see, so I'm sorry. 
I promise I'm gonna figure out lighting soon. <laughs> These ones have snowflakes, so maybe I'll show that to you. Um, but it, they also have like, this one has a, like a, a silver um, glitter finish. And uh, so yet the finish is different with all of them. Some of them are really um, smooth and shiny and some are more um, textured like these are sparkly <laughs> and, and then I also have another sparkly one <laughs> just like I was thinking maybe for like New Year's and this is more of like a champagne color mm, champagne <laughs> so anyway so I'm gonna go ahead and show you how they work I'll open them up for you and um, and show you um, and like I said, um, there are lots of different versions of this kind of product, but I do think that the Inkoko were the first ones. I just like saying that Inkoko, Inkoko, Inkoko. I had a friend who used to call me Coco, which is so cute. I should have made that my ASMR name, Coco. That's so cute. <laughs> oh well. So, anyway, so Inkoko, Inkoko. I'll show you how to put them on. Um, but I am going to take this stuff off first and I don't know, you, I think everyone knows how to take off nail polish so um, well, maybe not everybody. Um, some of the guys might not. <laughs> anyway, but um, yes, I'll take off my nail polish first and then I will put um, I'll put on the new stuff and show you uh, how to do it. So, um, it's pretty easy once you figure it out. No painting required, and it's kind of um, it's kind of goof proof. And I'm such a goof, so I really need that. <laughs> so, anyway, I'll show you how to do it, and it should be fun. Okay. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and do the process of putting on the nail polish. Um, you want to work with a surface uh, that you don't mind getting a little bit dirty. Um, so I've just put out some papers. Um, it's not nearly as messy as a liquid nail polish, but it still can have a little bit of a mess, so it's always good to be careful and be clean. So, um, and the only tools I'm using are um, this, um, what do you call it, nail file. <laughs> Um, and this one is a Madewell nail file that I got from Birchbox a while back. Um, so, yeah, I'll be using the nail file. Um, you may want to already uh, have used your nail file to get your uh, fingernails sort of, you know, in the shape you want them. Um, and of course you'll want your nails trimmed so that they reflect the shape and length that you prefer. So, so we'll have that um, off to the side and I also just tend to always keep a little bit of tissue paper when I'm doing anything cosmetic just in case I need it so but really that's all you'll need which is great so we'll set those things to the side and again um, let me see I have all these different styles like I showed you from in Coco um, and so I think I'm going to go with one over the others. This is the more sparkly design. 
which is pretty, but I think I'll save for New Year's. Um, this is another sparkle design that's more silvery. And again, I'll probably save that for um, maybe for a party, that kind of thing. So, uh, this one is the one I'm thinking of using today, uh, which has some snowflakes. And, and they're blue and pink and white. And I think that that could be a really nice, pretty thing for winter, especially with Christmas coming up. So I'm going to set that one up here. Uh, there's also this one where you might be able to see something like them with a variety. So each finger can be a little different if you like. And this one has a reindeer design, which I think is adorable. But I'm going to go ahead and save these ones for next week, for when I actually do Christmassy kind of events, because I think it'll be really neat for that. So, And then I also happen to have this less seasonal design. And then it just has sort of the impressions of different colors, so... I'll probably save that one for a little while as well. But eventually you'll probably see me wearing them all. They do say they last um, up to 14 days, which is nice. Um, but like I said, that largely depends on how fast your nails grow and all of that. So, let's begin. Um, and again, these are just appliques. And... They have all of the information and instructions right here on the back. So it's really quite simple. Um, you just, it says, one, remove clear cover. Two, feel polished strip. Three, remove sliver tab or silver tab and select and um, apply to nail and gently stretch to fit. And then number five is to remove the excess. And that's why we have our nail file. So I'm going to go ahead and open. Um, and they just come in these nice envelopes. And um, so you just have to pop them open. And there's a little bit of um, adhesive to make sure they stay uh, to make sure they stay really sterile. So, okay. So we pop it open. And then reach inside. And lo and behold, the strips come out. Let me just make sure that that's everything. Yep. Okay. So at that point, we can just set aside the packaging. Um, which we probably won't use again. So, I must apologize um, that my hands are not uh, as pristine as they should be. I think because of the dry weather and thing that things, there's just a couple uh, red spots and things like that um, from dry skin and me like, pulling at it. So I apologize for that. Uh, okay, so... Um, these are the strips, and they come in this very sterile sealed package, which is great, because it's very important with any kind of cosmetic, uh, product, that first and foremost, it be sterile. So, um, and then I'm going to go ahead and pop that open. There is a little tear line. Whoops. There's a little tear line right up here. So we'll go ahead and use it. And you just gently tear it open, like so. And I'm just going to go ahead and pull and discard. And so, the first thing you'll notice immediately once you've actually opened the product is that it smells 
just like nail polish. So, don't be surprised when you open it up and it has a bit of that strong nail polish smell. Um, it is simply because this is actually nail polish. Um, it's just in a different form. So, if you ever get a product like this that is meant to be a nail applique and it, um, it isn't, uh, it doesn't have this uh, nail polish smell, you know you're probably not dealing with the real thing. You're dealing with, like I said before, the sort of sticker or decal type, which um, in my opinion, simply won't lay flat. Um, they sort of bunch up and they crease and they're just not as good. So, you'll notice that you have a few extras. So even if you did from each one of these, one for each finger, you'd have a little bit extra. That gives you not only a little bit of a choice of which design you want to put on which nail, but it also gives you a little bit of insurance in case one of the appliques doesn't fit quite right or you make a mistake. I always find that the ones in the very end here, which you can see are thin and tapered like a pinky finger, are actually a little bit too thin for my nails. Um, I have very small hands and yet I do find these on the ends to typically be a bit too thin, but I will um, go ahead and show you a little bit of how this works, and hopefully that will be somewhat instructive in case you'd like to try them for yourself. So, I'm going to go ahead and take a strip, and then I'm just going to score and pull so that I have one single finger's worth. So as I've done that, I'm going to set these other strips off to the side for now, like so. Okay. Now, we can look here at the strip, and you'll notice that there's a bit of a silver line at the bottom. If we go back to our instructions, let me grab them for you. First thing we want to do is remove the clear cover from the polish. I'm sorry, there you go, it's right there. So, we're going to do just that. We're going to take it, and then we notice that there's a small cover. And then we'll go ahead and lift up on that, and this small uh, transparent cover can go ahead and be discarded. So we'll put this in the discard pile over here. And then you have the nail polish itself, um, which is not wet at all, which is really good, um, but it is good to start working with it and placing it as soon as possible. So, the next thing that we're going to do is to peel the polished strip, okay? So, we're going to go ahead and take it lift up and we can go far back if we want or we can just lift it right here from the edge now so once you've taken the strip and these ones I've just noticed seem to have teeny tiny little reindeer on them which is so cute what you want to do then is align them right up against the end of the nail, right where the nail meets the cuticle, like so. And if you mess up on positioning it, uh, simply remove it and try again. It's really not stuck into place until you start to stretch and work with it, which is what I'm going to be doing right now since I'm satisfied with the placement and the coverage. As I start to work it in, I am 
doing a couple things all at the same time. And this is really, really easy to sort of feel your way through once you've done this once or twice. So, first of all, I'm making sure that the adhesive side has contact with all of the nail. And I know you could do this relatively quickly, um, but I like to make sure that there aren't any bubbles or any kind of creases while we're doing this. I'm also sort of contouring out where the edge of my nail is. Again, you're just pulling forward a little bit. If you can see, I'm pulling forward just a bit on that. And that's to really give it that um, full fit and that nail polish look to avoid any kind of creases uh, and to get the best finish. And now, I'm just smoothing it, smoothing it with my fingernail. Like I said, for some of you, you might be pros at this right away, and it might take you just a matter of seconds to get each one on perfectly. For me, I'm not as confident. Um, I haven't how many times have I used these? Only a handful, no pun intended. So I'm still learning as well. Again, from all sides, you want to pull forward just to make sure that everything is as smooth as possible. Now, here's where the kind of fun part starts. Once you really feel that your entire finger has been covered. And it's sitting the way you like it to sit. You can start considering scoring. <laughs> scoring or um, basically to me making an imprint of where you're going to go ahead and uh, not cut but file away. So, you'll also notice me doing this on the side. I'm using my other nail <laughs> to uh, carve out the excess on the side there. You might be able to see, and now it comes up as a little bit extra. That way, my nail is covered, but the surrounding skin is obviously not and that gives you that sort of manicure perfect look. So, um, like I said, some of the thinner ones you might actually struggle to uh, fill your whole nail, but <laughs> these bigger ones are sort of perfect, and you might actually have to um, make them a little bit smaller right around the edges. So, you can kind of see I've basically just bent it down. Um, but you want to be careful, again, of um, creating any kind of bumps, creating any kind of creases, because nobody wants those. So, kind of looks like a mess now, but I'm going to go ahead and take my file. It has this nice pretty side, but I'm going to use the plain side. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and start to gently file and shape off any of the excess. Um, and really this file is acting almost like, well, it's almost cutting. It's almost cutting through the polish so that you end up being able to just kind of pull and release the excess. Um, as you can see, because the file has really created a little bit of a cut. I guess not really cut's not the right word, but you just file away. You file away the rest of what you don't want. And it's pretty cool. And like I said, you can also to some degree use your own nails doing this. So I can go in and kind of 
just whatever you want to do to shape it. And this also gives you the chance to uh, shape the nail exactly the way you want it. I always like mine a little bit squared off and a little bit flat on the top. Okay, and that makes it almost done. So you can simply peel away the excess like that, which looks a little bit messy. <laughs> and once again, Go and make sure everything is nice and smooth. Um, your nail will already be dry, but uh, you still have the opportunity to do a little bit of smoothing, um, a little bit of cajoling, <laughs> to make sure that it's exactly how you want it to be, which is nice. So, and you want to make sure on both sides it's exactly as you like it. And then you end up with a cute little reindeer on your nail, which is fun. I will note that some patterns and colors are easier than others if you've never done this before. Um, this one, for example, since it does have white in it, it can um, be a little more difficult to work with, uh, as white is less, you know, less forgiving of um, any kind of mistakes, but it's fun for Christmas, isn't it? Okay, so then we're going to go on to the next nail. Now, if you are using them all the same size, you can sort of decide, oh well, I'll just use the big size again. Uh, sometimes I find the bigger size is easier to work with, uh, but since we are going for a bit of variety, I'm going to go ahead and tear off the first one, which is identical to the one I already have on, and then I'll go ahead and set that there. So we're going to be dealing with the pink snowflakes this time. So again, I'll go ahead and set the rest with the others over here. And then we have our pink snowflakes, which are very cute. So once more, we're going to take off the transparent peel. And then we're going to get in and go under the silver. And pull it off like so. Now, I think that they always um, mean for you to use the, uh, the tip um, that you pull off here as the part that goes right against the cuticle since it's most rounded. But if for any reason you ever break that when you're sort of peeling it apart, you can always use the other side. But this one broke quite nicely, the way it should. So I'm going to go ahead. And again, you can be really, really picky about how you want it to sit and where you want it positioned. Um, because it is forgiving. Um, you can reposition to a point until you start to really stretch it onto the nail, and then it becomes it becomes quite bonded. So, but I like the positioning, and we're just gonna stretch from all sides, kind of pull and stretch, pull and stretch, pull. So that it gets nice and even. And we go like this. Okay. The tricky part, of course, is that nails are not flat. They have a contour toward them. 
So when you're pulling and stretching and positioning, you want to make sure that you're able to maintain that contour or that curve, I guess, without uh, any kind of bunching up um, on the part of the polish. So we commit to where it's going to lie and then we can use a combination of our own fingers and the nail file to really set it into place. And again, these ones just have a nice little peak of snowflakes. And as I've said, you may be able to do this very, very quickly. I tend to to, when it comes to nails, be quite the, um, oaf. I'm not great at nail stuff. That's one of the reasons I like these. Uh, they give sort of a, like a more professional looking finish. And then it does look quite funny to have so much excess like that. Why we're gonna file it. You could also use some nail scissors if you wanted to get rid of some of the excess, but ultimately I think the file is gonna be your best tool. So, again, I'm gonna come with the file on top and fold over everywhere that I feel like it needs to be folded over. And then you kind of get a sense of where the line is. And then I like to make sure that it's looking right on the sides of the nail, which more or less this one is fitting uh, up until right about here. So, and then we can go ahead and again, Let's just make sure everything is right in place. And you can use the file on the sides of it as well. So, we can start to file. And then we'll start to file kind of along the side. And again, you can use it to make sure everything's staying in place. And then we'll file on this side too. And you could also file quite a bit faster if you wanted to. Okay. And once more, I'm going to get into the side with my other fingernail just to make sure that I kind of, like I said, score where I want it to come off so that the wrap looks like it's fully on my fingernail and not just a little sticker or something like that. And typically I do this while I'm like watching some TV or something like that, and it's almost kind of fun in a way. This is something to keep your hands occupied. If you ever feel that way, like you know, watching just watching TV or just watching a movie feels sort of strange in this day and age when we're used to doing so many different tasks at one time, so. And you can also start to, like here, I've stretched it, so I'm going to show you an alternate method where I'm just using my other nail to go in and make the cut line, the cut, 
I think cat doesn't sound like quite the right word, but that's sort of what you're doing is you know, cutting into the nail um, or into the, the adhesive and then it comes right off. And then you're just left with the job of once more making sure everything is um, positioned and you can sort of tack under if you want and that way when you file the rest of it will come off. Now this one I'm not loving how thick it's looking around the edges so you can see it's kind of going um, past the border of the nail so I'm just going to use my own nail on the other hand to sort of cut and you can see remove the excess and then it's a nice straight line which is ideal and you can do the same thing on the other side Maybe a little bit difficult to see what I'm doing, but and um, these will accommodate really any length of nail. Um, I personally like to have my nails just a tiny bit over um, where the finger is. I think that nails are actually given to us with a reason and um, I find that having just a tiny bit of a nail uh, in length, having a little extra can be really helpful in day to day so I don't like to have big super long nails but a little tiny bit of nail can go a long way world. And again, you can file them down. And then they're nice and smooth. And you can start to see that they start looking like a real manicure, which is nice. So, I'll show you another one. <laughs> Sorry, I have <laughs> you may see my sleeves. I'm wearing like a unicorn jumper um, or a unicorn um, pajama set just unicorn uh, with like a it has like a hood with a, with a unicorn horn and sometime I'll show it to you but anyway okay so these ones are nice but again you can kind of see that the length um, is not going to Obviously, this length is not for one nail, unless you had really, really, really long nails. So, um, it's just going to be the side or the, um, the bottom of the nail that's going to have the pattern. So, you can kind of think your way through it, decide how you're going to apply it. And then, once more get under the silver part and peel so instead of risking a little bit of tear on the bottom and you can see, and actually that one came out quite nice too so maybe we will just use it uh, but sometimes I'll just go to the other side and start with that the bottoms do tend to have the better curvature so this is going on, and this one's really sweet. Okay. And this one went on so easily and so smoothly. So all we have to do is stretch, like so. And then I can go ahead and file this one down. And sometimes you can kind of do it sectionally, so you get rid of like one section at a time, which I'm just going to do with my nail here. And that can be a good way to do it. I 
I think you sort of start to figure out, you know, what works best for you. <laughs> What's the easiest way to get the best results? The fastest, right? So, for me, <laughs> even though this is not the proper way, but I've sh kind of shown you the proper way, I get in there with my own nail and take off the excess, put that out, and then it's pretty much ready to go. So, um, if you want, you can still do a little file on that, you know, just to make sure. And then again, I kind of just do a roll, like a rolling motion to make sure everything is, is nice. But that one went on so nice and easily. Um, and again, you're always welcome to kind of file the top. And that will really help make sure that the shape and the polish all kind of work together. And so you start to have ever so, ever so, everything is ever so, so. Um, and then, <laughs> so we go back and we look at, okay. So the next one we can do are these blue snowflakes that are quite large in scale. I think that sometimes when you visually mix up scale like that, it can be quite cute. Because we see the snowflakes, if you can, this one's a little bit shiny. These ones all come with a little bit of a, um, a sheen to them, so they're going to look a little bit different on camera than they do in real life, but, um, but anyway, this one has little pink snowflakes, and the little pink snowflakes are very cute. But this one has big blue snowflakes, which is cool. So, one more time, we're gonna go ahead and take off the transparent layer, and then we're gonna go under the silver to pull it off. Then we're going to take the tab, pull it like this, and then go ahead and pull off the end. I always like to inspect the end to make sure that nothing bad happened during the pull-off process and it looks good to me. So then we'll go ahead and place it on the finger. Now, this is my ring finger, <laughs> so to me it's the one that's most important to get right, because what's the point of having a pretty ring if you don't have nice nails to go with it, right? <laughs> okay, so. I'll show you this one a little bit more close up, and it's fitting really well. So, I'm going to kind of press and press and press so that it's nice and smooth and you can never smooth it too much then I'm going to start sort of pulling in order to create that bond okay and as I'm pulling I'm also getting a sense of where I'll want to um, basically trim or file off the excess. But this time, um, I'm going to just use my finger under there like this and start to, um, start to kind of get rid of the excess that way. And again, it's something that it may not make a whole lot of sense when you're watching it, but when you do it, you'll start to feel your way through. Kind of feel like, okay, what works best for you? So you'll see that for me, that gets rid of the excess, but it's still not perfect, and that's why we'll come back with the nail file. So, okay. So we can look at it from the top. We can see that the edge is maybe not perfect, perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and just make sure we press it down, press it down. 
and look at it from every angle. And I notice here we still have a little bit of extra and a little bit that's not, not sitting perfectly. So, again, even though I've gone in with my trusty nails, <laughs> use my nails to do my nails, I am going to go in and just softly and smoothly do just a little bit of a file. And I'm just filing in one direction at a time very softly. This way we can get our whole hand done. And we can do it gently and calmly. Okay. And so then I can go in and any excess under the nail that I've kind of pressed under, and I'll be ready to come off and give us a really nice smooth line. And this is why I say to use, you know, use paper or something underneath. Um, it doesn't really create, um, like it's, it's already dry, so you can see I'm, you know, pressing all of these down with my fingers, and there's absolutely no mess. Uh, so you don't have to worry about things getting stained the way you do with uh, liquid nail polish, but you do get a little, you know, you build up some of these little bits and pieces, and so I just like to keep it all in one place, so afterward I can just roll up the paper and throw it away. And then there's, there's no muss, no fuss, no mess. starting to have a different pattern on every nail. So I'll finish the last one on this hand for you. Um, now, we have some choices because these are the ones we have left. Um, and the nice thing here is that um, we sort of have two um, on the very ends that are quite similar. Uh, and like I said, I don't tend to like to use the really, really thin ones because they don't quite cover the whole nail for me. So we're going to go ahead and use this one in the middle. So, once more, we'll take off one and two. So now we're just left with one. And uh, we hope that that will fit nicely on our pinky. So, go ahead, peel off the transparent layer. It's just, just a protective layer for the polish. And then we're going to get it under this silver line. And peel. I'm going to disregard the backing. Okay. Then we can go ahead and pull off the silver tab. Once more, I check to make sure that didn't sort of yank or disrupt the curve and it looks nice and clean to me so we'll go ahead and use that side and now again uh, with the pinky you just want to make sure that you've got the whole thing covered um, it's easier of course if you're using darker colors that are less defined with patterns but when you are using visible patterns, you definitely want to make sure you line it up so that uh, so that the pattern so that the pattern goes straight up and down like this. And then we start to just pull and secure, pull and secure. Don't worry, the adhesive side is really not too sticky. <laughs> but I would say, um, do do this somewhere where you don't mind having a little bit of the uh, nail polish fumes, if you're sensitive to them. I know my cats certainly don't like the smell of nail polish. <laughs> and the good thing is that 
that the smell of nail polish is really only from the side of the applique that's not attached to anything. So once you finish up your manicure, um, the smell pretty much goes away right away. And like I said, there's no drying time. So now for some of you, it may be much easier and you may get a much better result from just using nail polish. And that is great and I'm envious of you. Um, but these are a fun way to get different patterns, different kind of nail art, um, and even if you're not a, what do they, they call them lacqueristas, lacquerista. even if you're not a lacquerista, it, it can be fun and easy, um, and I'm sure that I am not doing any of this perfectly, <laughs> so feel free to chastise me about that. Nails have always been the one thing that are very difficult for me. I think part of it is because I tend to have shaky hands and I also have small hands and maybe those are just excuses. Maybe I am just sort of bad at nails, but ever since I found uh, these nail wraps, it's been a lot easier. Obviously, this may seem to take a little bit more time, um, but I like the results. I like the fact that it's dry right away. I hate waiting for nails to dry. I can't stand it, so that's one of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to nails. Um, so what you'll have basically is the same kind of finish and uh, staying power as if you've gone in for a shellac or gel manicure, if you're familiar with that. Um, and we see that this one is actually a little bit big uh, width-wise on my pinky. So I'm going to go ahead and trim it, and I'm just trimming it by running my other nail right along the side of this one, and that provides a straight, natural line. Again, you can do this with your nail file, and you just file it off. Um, for me, this is just the fastest way to do it. And then we make sure there's no excess under the nail. And then we really want to look, and on this side too, make sure that it fits just right. So that it doesn't look like it's sort of overflowing or anything like that. Um, and of course, you never want your nails to look super wide or globular. <laughs> so, a lot of it though is a lot of the touching up you can really, really just do with your hands, um, which is nice. So, I'm going to try to clear some of this for you. Tap this off. And of course, your, um, your nail file doesn't really take any damage either, which is nice because I happen to quite like this one. So you can slip it back into its little cage, cage, not cage, into its little house. Its little house. So. But yes, the nail file doesn't take any real damage. Um, and then you can start to see. So this is obviously <laughs> the hand I still have to do. Um, but you can see that this one is sort of festive and ready for Christmas now. Um, and if you see any kind of like bumps or anything like that, you can just go back and sort of press them in. They're still uh, sort of pliable for a while, which is nice. So you can kind of look at them in different light and things like that, but um, they end up, I think, very festive. This one actually has a little, yeah, I don't think you can quite see it, but it has a little reindeer on it, which is nice, and 
the rest has just a variety of like snowflakes and things like that. Again, you can kind of press them and cajole them until they're exactly the way you want them to be. Um, I will say about any nail polish that's kind of white, because I was going to look uh, a little bit, gosh, I don't know. It can, it can look, um, look a little bit less, um, crisp because you, you know, it's sort of, especially on my hands that are already pale, it sort of blends, blends in, but I think they'll be really fun for the holidays. So anyway, I'll do the rest <laughs> on my own, um, but maybe this was a little bit, um, helpful if you've been thinking about, uh, about trying something like this. So, anyway, uh, okay, well, I thank you for joining me, and I'll see you again soon. Okay, bye guys.